This is James Oda for IFL TV in association with Matt Klins, Jim Marbella. With me, I've got the new WBO European lightweight champion, Terry Flanagan. What's happening, Tom? Yeah, I'm good, James. Yeah, just won this, but not the best performance, but still a win. Mm -hmm. All the same. Talk to me a little bit about the fight. Steve Norman, very tough character. Tough fight, eh? Come for a fight. It was hard work every minute of every round, but I've shown that I can win on a night where I didn't box at my best and show that I'm tough. I can have a fight and take a shot and I never got hurt in there and it's over the moon. Do you honestly think you had a few more gears to go through? A few more gears? Mm -hmm. no, it was tough like I say, I, I knew I was fit, I knew I was going to do the 12 comfy, I was still comfy after he got through out but he got through out because he got frustrated mm -hmm. and I think he was tiring a bit. I mean, what sort of effect did these headbutts have on you through the fight? Because he obviously got Not really, really but lost point. He did finger. He, he was throwing, throwing his head in, so it was a legal one. So I knew he was getting frustrated. It didn't bother me at all. I wasn't, wasn't fussed, but I knew, I knew it, well, he was starting to get frustrated. And it's nice to see someone get frustrated because you know you're doing something right. Indeed. I mean, this is an eliminator now for a world title shot. Terence Crawford rumoured to be moving up, so that probably means Diaz for a vacant title. What does that mean to you, Terry? Yeah, I've heard that Diaz has to have an eliminate. I don't know who you said with, but yeah, to fight, just to fight for a world title against either one of them, uh, it's going to be uh, great. Frank, Francis said he's going to try and get it in Manchester in the summer, so I'll be over the moon if that can happen. I Dream mean, come to. When you was mandatory for British title for so long, and as you said, trying to get to English title level even before that. Did you think you would get a chance to win this belt? Did, did you visualise this moment in your head? No, you don't. Do you think of winning British titles and then when I won the British, this is coming on and I jumped at the chance. So, yeah, of course, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take it like, with both hands. But, yeah, I knew if, I'd give it everything and I knew, I'd, I knew I'd come out victorious. Do you believe you're the best lightweight in the country of course at this I do. moment in time? Yeah. Of course, they're not going off that performance. People look at that performance and say, nah, I'll beat, I'll beat him, I could beat him, but I know that's not me at 50%. And it was shocking tonight and still showing that I could win. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I mean, Derry Matthews' fight versus Richard Apple has been, been put back, relatively. Yeah, I'm good for Derry because I know he's looking forward to that fight. But, yeah, hopefully he gets the fight and wins and I can win mine. And Probably a big fight, unification fight down the line, so yeah. Would be absolutely massive, Gosh, wouldn't yeah. it? Great. Like, Manchester, as we know, they get behind their boxes. You've only got to look at the likes of Ricky Hatton to see see when they believe in you, what you can do. We've had yeah. this conversation before. Do you feel you're getting that kind of support now and that kind of belief? I think people are starting to get behind me now. It's, it's a lot of fighters come from Manchester, aren't they? And they, they follow them and they follow a lot of boxes. Like, it's not like other areas where you just get the one. Manchester, you got loads of champions, you've had loads of champions and it's still going to be loads more so they want to see you prove yourself first and show that like, you, you're going to do something and now hopefully everyone will start getting behind me and following me. Yet to defend your British title, are you going to vacate that belt now? What's the plan? I'm not too sure whatever the managing team says but yeah I'd imagine we'd vacate now but Can yeah. you tell me how you're feeling right now? Has it sunk in? No, it's sunk in yet and when I wake up in the morning I realise I'm boxing for a world title, it's going to be unreal, but mm. yeah, I'm happy. I'm up, uh, As you know, you're, you're in this game to win titles, but also to financially secure the legacy of your family. So yeah. a world title shot might might be even even be able to do that, you know. Yeah, first and foremost, it winning titles. Like when he said to me after the prize, like, oh, what are you going to do with the money? I hadn't even made any plans to do do anything. I, I, I believed that I was going to win it. Everyone had money on me to win it. They, they told everyone I was going to win it, but I never really thought about the money. Right. Money don't enter my mind, he just says, I don't even really, my coach Steve sorts all the money out and everything and my manager and I just uh, just want titles mate, it's a especially massive, world titles. It's a massive, massive potential fight for you, so I know, I know you're going to be for all thoughts of fighting for this world title but looking beyond that, I said, the implications in the lightweight division could be absolutely massive, couldn't they? Of course, yeah, like you say, British boxing at, at the minute in the lightweights, it's the best it's ever been. The level of British fighters is... We've raised the bar, we're all dragging each other along, pushing each other and showing that British champions can go on and win world titles, which I'm planning on doing in the summer. Listen, couldn't happen to a nicer guy. Congratulations Cheers, James, on your victory. You. And thank you for giving IFL TV a bit of Cheers, your time. Cheers, thank you very much. Top man, Tom.